Otherwise, I think if you're not a member, you get like a forbidden, you're not allowed to get in there. But anyways, yeah, sign up for Roll20. Uh, you can click the links I put on there and join and join the party. Uh, this little talk, I want to take just a couple minutes. I don't want to take too much time. I, I was a little uh, overwinded last week, so I want to make this quick and to the point. Uh, I had been talking about how not to be a bad DM. This session, though, I want to kind of kind of uh, speak about how not to be a bad player. Uh, because there are different things, and next session I want to I want to add on to that and and talk about that as well. But uh, in this in this case, I want to give you an example of uh, how not to be a bad player. And this is for the people watching Twitch who had asked me some questions, so I want to just kind of answer this very quickly. Uh, the number one thing, or not the number one, but the uh, the first item in my list of, of talking about things is the sour puss or the poor sport. And D&D, in a, in a way, actually mimics real life. It uh, has its ups and downs. So don't throw in the towel when you accidentally make an incorrect assumption about something. That's part of the fun. Uh, how can you expect to really know the intricacies of a fantasy world? That's just that's impossible. It's impossible when magic is involved, just plain and simple. Things may not always be what they appear to be, and so on and so forth. I was hosting a very popular module with a group, and one one player did something the wrong way, according to the module, of course. And as a result, due to his own actions, ended up at the beginning of the crypt, minus all of his possessions. Rather than sprinting back to the group and tough it out, he literally gets up, leaves the game table, he tears up his character sheet and exits the building in a huff, never to be seen from again. Uh, now, if he would have stuck around for an hour longer and did exactly what I said he would have done, uh, he would have seen what the remaining players at the table saw. When they learned from his mistake, they did the activity he was trying to do the right way and entered into a secret antechamber beyond because there, in a pile in the middle of the floor, sitting right on top of all the rest of the treasure from uh, all the previous adventures, were his belongings, along with those from all the prior adventuring uh, people that had never gotten that far in the module, and so on and so forth. And so they did what anyone would do. They helped themselves to his stuff. And so the mage, of course, took all the magic items he'd abandoned, and the warrior took all the weapons, and the thief took all the cash, and they ended up successfully finding and destroying the lich anyways. Likewise, uh, in this group, uh, some folks have speculated, and because they... Uh, were acting on limited knowledge, ended up speculating wrong, and as a result, almost caused a near disaster. But guess what? They're still here playing. Why? Because they're professionals, because they understand this concept that we're discussing. They had fun with the situation. They didn't take it the wrong way. They didn't take it personally. They didn't allow it to, quote-unquote, hurt their feelings, and so on and so forth. If you go back and watch that session you'll see that I talk in a way that it can be interpreted in a variety of ways. And that's what a good DM will do. He'll, he'll, he'll answer your question, but it'll be, it'll, be, it'll be specific, but it'll kind of, in, in a weird kind of a way, be vague at the same time. And that just comes with being, when just, a, you know, just practicing, uh, you know, being a DM. And that's half the fun of being a DM, seeing how, how, how players process the information, how they choose or uh, excuse me, what they choose to do with it, or even if they act upon it, right, wrong, or indifferent. So, D and D is a game, of course. Treat it as such, and most importantly, have fun. That's that's why we're here, for goodness sakes, you know. And last but not least, I want to just say one more thing. Uh, this is kind of off off of that uh, subject matter. I want to shift gears a little bit here uh, and talk to you for about sixty seconds on lost in roll twenty land and missing fifty percent. And this was, was been something that's been on my mind for a while. I wanted to share with everybody. Uh, the biggest problem I see in hosting uh, a role-playing game like D&D Online is that due to the nature of Roll20 being graphical in nature, players have a tendency to get lost in quote-unquote video game land and as a result end up missing the majority of the D&D content. In other words, secrets and clues, they tend to go undiscovered because players tend to take what they see on the screen as being literal, complete, and as a result, fail to explore the other side of the game, the parts that are not seen or things that are not 
shown visually. Remember that I refer to Roll20 as nothing more than a chessboard. The majority of the activity happens audibly, in, the, in this case through Skype. And so having said that, do your players do things like search for hidden floor tiles? They might walk across the floor tiles that I put there graphically, but do, do, they, do they search for hidden floor tiles? Do they look for loose bricks? They might see I put some brick work there, but do they go and actually do something with it? How about footprints? Do they dig through monster dung piles? That's an interesting concept. Do they look under furniture? How about behind things? How about in chests for false lids and bottoms? Do they, do they look up? Do they ask the DM, tell me what, I'm going to look up. Do I see, what, tell me what I see. Do they talk to valuable NPCs that are along for the ride and ask the right questions to get information that they can use to their advantage? Do they take the clues that have been found and draw conclusions? Do, can they speculate on that? You know what, I think they're probably doing this and that. And uh, there's so much more to D&D than a bunch of cheesy tokens that you see on the screen. Uh, so, in other words, be sure to challenge your players to explore the other half of D&D, the non-visible elements of the game, and they will be richly rewarded for their efforts. And so, with that, I would like to start tonight's session. Uh, and the best way to do that, of course, is to... Uh, we got to put some music on here. That's the first thing. Uh, and I have queued up... Uh, this one right here, and you guys are going to like this one, uh, that one, and I want to give a sound check on everybody.